Hey, Pastor Gary here for another Wednesday Word. I hope you're having a great week so far. Uh, I'm excited to be here. We're going to start a series uh, entitled just the, uh, the characteristics of a committed Christian. And, and for the next seven, eight weeks, we're going to look at a different characteristic that a committed Christian should have. Uh, we're going to start with the first characteristic, which is a love for God, that they that a committed Christian loves God. Uh, before we dive too deep into God's word, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just come to you right now, Father, Father, and I just, I thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father. Father, I pray that you just uh, remove any obstacles right now, any distractions that might be going on, Father, so that we could just spend dedicated time with you, Father, in your word, Father, learning more about you, Father. Father, we thank you for all that you've done in our lives, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. So uh, let's begin. Let's kick off again. So the first characteristic is a committed Christian loves God. In Matthew uh, 23, 22, verses uh, 37 and 38, um, Jesus says this, uh, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. See, God created us to love God. God created us to love him. C.S. Lewis said, Every Christian would agree that a man's spiritual health is exactly proportional to his love for God. Now, go ahead and open your Bible to Colossians 3. We're going to spend the majority of today in Colossians 3. And and, and it's, we're going to be in verses uh, 14 through 17. Uh, let's look at verse 14. Uh, Paul writes and he tells us this. He says, beyond all these things, put on love. Okay, but what does that look like? I mean, if I'm living my life loving God, how will that be revealed in my daily life? Well, we have to look at verses 15 through 17 to find that out. And so 15 through 17, it says, let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you, with all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord, Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. See, a love for God will make a difference in our walk, our worship, and our work. Let's look at how a love for God makes a difference in our in our walk. Now, Colossians 3.15 begins by saying that we will live by the rule of peace. As committed Christians, we seek to allow peace to rule in our hearts. This means that we will seek to avoid those things that which that, that disturb the peace of our relationship with God, with Jesus. Things like sin, disobedience, selfishness, neglect of prayer, neglect of God's word. As committed Christians, we confess our sins immediately. We obey God faithfully. We submit to, to Christ's lordship daily. We spend time in prayer and in the word daily because that's how we hear from God, right? Through his words, through prayer. Paul is telling us that our love for God will not only impact how we walk with God, but it will impact how we walk with one another. The Bible, the Bible, uh, the message Bible paraphrases Colossians 3, 315 this way. It says, let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other and step with one, each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing and cultivate thankfulness. See, a committed Christian longs for peace and works for peace and sacrifices for peace. Yeah, but pastor, what if what if peace doesn't come? What do we do? Well, for that, we go to Romans 12, 18. Romans 12, 18, uh, Paul writes this. If possible, for, for uh, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. So let me read that again. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. When Jesus gave us the great commandment, he, he made it clear that a love for God will be revealed by a love for others. So as long as we are within our power, we should love others. Regardless of what they've done to us, we should love all men. Now, that's easy to say, hard to do in the moment. And I get that. But that's where we have to die to ourselves daily, take up our cross, and, and follow the Lord. We have to die to ourselves because in our flesh, we don't want to like people that have hurt us. 
But that's exactly the love that we need to show because look what we did to Christ. But yet God loved us so much that he gave his son to die for us. We must love others even if we in our flesh don't want to. Jesus tells us in Matthew twenty two thirty nine, 39, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, I love myself. I love me some me. But I should love others more than I love me. A committed Christian will love others as he loves himself. By doing so, the blessing and benefit of being at peace with God is revealed to others, which is why we need to be passionate about the pursuit of peace in our relationship with others especially with our brothers and sisters in Christ. See, Jesus says in John 17, 21, that they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. Jesus is stating that we cannot expect the world to believe the Father sent the Son that Jesus' claims are true and that Christianity is true unless the world sees some reality of the oneness of true Christians. You know, that's the, we have such uh, uh, a need to, to be united because it, the smallest, the small littlest, the, the, the smallest crack, if I can get that out, then people, then you'll start hearing the chirping. Oh, is that what it means to be a Christian? Oh, is that what it means to be a Christian? And so we need to do everything we can to be united and to love each other and forgive each other of the of, of the things that maybe somebody has hurt you. But church, the, the church is filled with hurt people, but that's what brings us together. That's the common thing is our hurt and our pain, but our reliance and re on, on God to mend us, to make us new. You know, a love of God will also make a difference in our worship. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in our hearts to God. If a believer's focus in life is on expressing their love for God, how will that be revealed in our worship to God? Well, our worship will be an informed worship. The committed Christian, that's us, spends time in prayer and in the word daily. We can worship God in an informed, in an informed manner. We worship in truth. Worship is not just an emotional exercise, but a response of the heart built on truth about God. Psalms 145, 18 says, the Lord is near to all who call upon him and to all who call upon him in truth. The focus of the worship of the committed Christian will be on God, not on themselves. Because they are growing in their knowledge of God through their study of the word. When we worship, the attention shouldn't be on us. It should be on God. Anything that we do within our worship should be glorifying God. If we're bringing attention to ourselves, then we're not doing it. It's for the wrong reason. It's, it's like those Pharisees that prayed, you know, at least I'm not like the tax collector. At least I'm not like the publican. You know, they weren't praising, seeking, you know, seeking to give glory to God. They were giving glory to themselves. Our worship is a growing expression of, of how in awe of God we are. Another thing is our worship will be an interactive worship. We've already spoken about the, how a committed Christians, uh, we as committed Christians desire to pursue a way of peace within our relationships with each other. One of the ways we do that is by worshiping with our fellow believers. We are gathered together. One of the promises of the Bible speaks specifically about that. In Matthew 18, 20, it says, For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. The third thing is our worship will be a musical worship. Now, I know we all have our preferences, but Paul mentions three categories of songs that we might use in worship. Psalms, that's scripture based, right? Holy, 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 Revelations 4, 8. I will enter his gate, Psalms 104. Uh, Seek ye first, Matthew 6, 33. Come, now is the time to worship. Uh, you know, uh, Philippians 2, 9 through 11. As the deer, Psalms 42. Hymns, that's theology based songs, song, sung about God. 
A mighty fortress is our God. Great is thy faithfulness. Amazing grace. And, and then there's spiritual songs. Those are testimony based songs sung to God. Blessed assurance. How great thou art. I love you, Lord. Amazing grace. My chains are gone. The, the idea here is that the committed Christian is so in love with God that they delight in expressing that love in whatever way possible. Again, we all have our preferences, but it's not about us. It's about giving glory and, and worshiping God. You know, the, a love for God will also make a difference in our work. Because of our love for God, our concern is that we honor the Lord in whatever we do. You know, Sophia and I always tell the boys, and we've told the boys since, you know, Jordan was in, you know, in kindergarten or before, and then Aiden along the way as well, is that, you know, your work is a representation of who you are. And so don't turn in sloppy work. If it's sloppy, if you can't read it, what makes you think the teacher can read it? And so before you submit anything, before you turn anything else, I want you to ask the question, am I proud of it? Am I proud of the work that I'm turning in? Because if you're not proud of the work you're turning in, then you need to do it over again. Because you are what you produce and what you you submit as a, as a student. Well, for the committed Christian, wherever you wherever we are working or whatever we are doing, our work is a reflection on God. And out of love of our Savior, we should always seek to do our very best to honor Him. One common thread throughout this passage, uh, Colossians three fifteen through seventeen, is being thankful. In verse fifteen. And be thankful. In verse 16, with thanksgiving in your hearts to God. Verse 17, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Being thankful is an expression of, uh, an expression on love and adoration. So what is the basis of our love for God? It's quite simple. It's his love for us. First John 4 10 says, in this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of our sins. First John 4 19. We love because he first loved us. The basis of our love for the Lord lies in our recognition that of our need of a savior, of his holiness, of our sinfulness and his grace and mercy. Those who are forgiven much, love much. A committed Christian loves God. I'll end with three questions. Do you love God? How is that being revealed in your walk, in your worship, your work? How might you need to grow in your love for Christ in the days ahead? These are some crazy times. These are times where people are just being so divisive in their, in their language and, 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 and their actions. As Christians, we need to be unifiers with our words, with our actions, because it all stems, it, it all comes down to our love for God. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that you first loved me, Father, that you sent your son down, Father, to die for my sins, Father so that I could spend eternity in heaven, Father. Father, I thank you that for all that you've done, Father, for your grace and your mercy, Father. Father, I just pray, Father, for those that don't know you, Father. Father, that you put somebody in their path, Father, that could share the word with them, Father. Father, as Christians, Father, Father, I pray that Father, this is just a, a reminder, Father. Father, that, that we should be showing our love for you in all aspects of our life, Father. In every interaction we have, Father. Not just on Sunday, Father, but on every day, Father. Father, I thank you. Thank you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. A uh, couple of announcements. Don't forget uh, this Sunday, uh, Pastor Joe's in his series, In the End Times. Uh, it's been great. It's been a great message so far. So you don't want to miss that. Either join us in person or online. Um, we have two services, 9 o'clock at Magnolia, 1045 at Spring. Also, if you're in a lift group, don't forget uh, our lift study, uh, Discover Your Destiny. I uh, covered the title there, but Discover Your Destiny. If you're not in a lift group, uh, get with somebody on Sunday uh, about getting in. Uh, plugging in with the lift group. Uh, I know here at spring, we're doing 
in person and then our in person lift groups are also doing zoom so if you're not ready to come back or if you're at you know wherever you are if you're not in spring but you want to be a part of a, a, a lift group uh call the church and we'll uh we'll send you the zoom link there's one in the morning at, here at spring at 9 30 with with uh, mike miller and then i have my lift group and we do a zoom uh and in person at 5 30 so get plugged in there's you know there's definitely ways for you to get plugged in either in person or online uh, praying for you. Uh, can't wait to see you on Sunday. God bless.